impact of GnRH agonists like Zoladex, Gonapeptil, Prostap long acting on the AMH levels. Why is that important? Because we use agonists for endometriosis, we use it as a part of the long protocol, and we use it for various different indications. So in, in, in this study, what they did is they looked at giving the GnRH agonist and then looking at the AMH levels at different intervals from starting from day seven after giving the agonist. 33 cases were seen and when the GnRH agonist was given, there was a drop in AMH by almost a median of 24% seven days after the GnRH agonist was given long acting and it seemed to recover between third and the fourth week. Now, and that is quite interesting because I don't think we know much about it and how and why the GnRH uh, receptors uh, are affected. Uh, and we use this quite extensively. Now, it seems that the recovery takes place between day 14 and, and day 13. And what we again do not understand is why is there a biphasic change of AMH. So it, it goes down, then it goes up again. And we just don't know why that biphasic uh, uh, rise occurs. And in these cases, again, the AMH does not become a reliable marker when we give GnRH uh, agonist. The second thing is, whenever you give the agonist, and this is outside the, uh, the talk, whenever you give the agonist in the luteal phase, and that is the luteal phase down regulation, you do not see a flare of FSH and LH happening at that time. You see the flare occurring generally when you give it in the beginning of the period, and that creates a flare while giving FSH and LH. Surprisingly, with the flare, the AMH levels do not rise. And that is something which, again, we have not understood very clearly. What we also know is that in a study done in, in 15 young girls who were giving GnRH agonist for three months, they saw a much more dramatic decline of AMH, which was much more long standing. And that is also a lesson to know that if you're giving a long duration of GnRH agonist, especially if you're trying to do it before starting stimulation of the ovaries, you are going to decline AMH levels to a, a certain level. Now, the question comes up is why does it happen? And what we know is that the GnRH receptors are expressed by granules as cells and are upregulated as a part of giving the injection. What we also know is that that decrease that occurs is, is probably because of upregulation of GnRH receptors. Now, what we know from rodents is that uh, after some time, the, the granular uh, cells expression of, of GnRH declines and the AMH starts increasing. So in short, what does this paper tell us? This paper is quite interesting. It tells us to a certain extent how the AMH can vary and it seems to act in different ways. So a flare-up occurs after, and the AMH does not increase. And in fact, the AMH, you give the, uh, uh, the flare and the AMH starts declining, and uh, which probably means that it's, uh, it is uh, getting attached to the receptors in the granular cells. And then the AMH, which declines, starts increasing. And so as a marker for uh, ovarian reserve, while you're on GnRH agonist long acting, it does not seem to be a reliable marker. But remember, one of the drawbacks of this study is that there's no antral follicle count which has been looked at. And so we are still not very clear of how the antral follicles behave in short, short acting uh, agonist. Thank you very much.